by the way, again, Jesus warned of in uh, Matthew 24, 24, false prophets, false Christ. There would be a great increase in these before his second coming, not the rapture, but his second coming. Here's a cover of Christianity Today. This is Christianity Today, May 2012. And on the cover of Christianity Today there is a lady by the name of Heidi Baker. Heidi Baker. Now, this is a screenshot of the article. I want to read to you what Heidi uh, Baker is up to according to Christianity Today. I want you to understand this. Heidi Baker is being embraced by evangelical leaders and pro-family leaders that would shock you particularly after you read what Christianity Today had to say about Heidi Baker. Let's go right to the article. Heidi Baker, known worldwide for her healing miracles, spends a third of every year on this charismatic speaking circuit where people routinely fall to the floor in unconscious bliss or shake and laugh uncontrollably. They come enthralled to hear of Baker's miracles. Well, ba uh, Baker works over in uh, Mozambique. And here the article goes on to say in Christianity Today, in recent years, she says 100% of the deaf children in, in her area where she's working there in Mozambique have been healed through prayer. Not only that, she claims scores have risen from the dead. Not only that, she claims scores have risen from the dead. Food has been multiplied. The crippled and blind have been restored. And the gospel is spread like fire. Uh, by the way, this is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in fact, I believe these people are worshiping a different Jesus because when you talk about their Jesus who comes in them, the secret Jesus who comes and they'll defeat death and they'll defeat the curse of sin and they'll raise the dead and they'll judge the church, uh, they'll be sinless. That's not the Jesus of the Bible at all. The article goes on to say, while his wife was sick, meaning Heidi, uh, Roland, that's her husband, visited the Toronto Airport Vineyard Church Fellowship where the controversial Toronto Blessing revival of the mid-90s had broken out. I don't know if you guys remember the, the uh, Toronto Blessing up there in Canada that broke out and it gave uh, really the birth down here in America to uh, uh, this holy laughter, uh, barking like dogs, uh, being slain in the spirit and this kind of thing. The article in Christianity Today, May 2012, said, it, meaning this Toronto Blessing, was marked by a static manifestations of the Holy Spirit most notably, holy laughter. Let me just stop you right there. I don't think these are manifestations of the Holy Spirit at all. In fact, I've shown you in a previous program, and I will in this program, the manifestations we're seeing within the charismatic movement, within the new apostolic movement, this holy laughter, this barking like dogs, the convulsing, I believe those are not manifestations of the Holy Spirit at all. I believe actually, quite frankly, they are manifestations of the demonic realm, and they look awfully similar to the manifestations we're seeing in Kundalini Yoga over in the Far East. I'll show you a video of the Word of Faith, New Apostolic Reformation manifestations, and that which is going on in India, and you can decide for yourself in just one moment. The article in Christianity Today goes on to say, one night she had a vision, meaning Heidi Baker, in which she literally ate his flesh, talking about Jesus, literally ate his flesh and drank his blood. He spoke to her about the children who so burdened her. Folks, I don't know what to say about that. Look, she literally ate his flesh and drank his blood. I think that speaks for itself, does it not? The article goes on to say, talking about the worship services they hold there in Mozambique. On Tuesday and Thursday mornings, Heidi teaches local student pastors and visiting Westerners at the Harvest School in Pimba. They gather in a large hillside shed, a concrete slab with a roof for shade, to face the heat, students wear shorts or loose-fitting sh uh, shirts, t-shirts, and flip-flops. Listen now. They sit on the floor or stretch out as a guitarist leads in the ultimate worship song of three chords, four words, repeated 50 times. Folks, what do you think happens when you repeat three chords, four words, 50 times, which is welcome in this place? So, welcome in this place, welcome in this place, welcome in this place. You do this 50 times? What is that called, folks? That, I believe, is nothing more than a mantra, where you take a few words and you recite it over and over. Today, we have the idea of contemplative prayer that's been taught within evangelicalism. This really came out of uh, the mysticism of the Catholic Church, was started and created by, in part by St. Teresa of Avila, a mystic nun of the mid-1500s, who taught four levels of prayer. By the fourth level of prayer, she taught that you are becoming a part of the divine. She was oftentimes seen levitating up off the floor. Now, this is St. Teresa of Avila. It's known as contemplative prayer, breath prayers, centering prayers, soaking prayers. And it's really nothing more, I believe, than transcendental meditation. 
the same thing practiced within the New Age movement, within Eastern mysticism. And I think that's what's going on here. Four words, three chords repeated 50 times. Welcome in this place. Words addressed to Jesus are repeated without variation at least 200 times lasting for 30 minutes. Man, if you repeat something 200 times lasting for 30 minutes, what is likely to happen? When I ask, when I give this presentation for a live audience and ask that, the response I hear from the audience is, you'd go into a trance. Well, look at what Christianity Today says. Some students kneel with eyes closed and hands lifted high, swaying themselves into a trance. Yeah. Others lie on their back with hands lifted straight into the air. Still others seem in, uh, unengaged by the music, looking around even quietly conversing with neighbors. Folks, I believe these folks are fooling around with something that the scriptures tell us clearly to have nothing to do with. In fact, look at the article, what it says here. Some of the students shout angry defiance at Satan. In our last program, we looked at that, didn't we? This idea that they believe they're to go around binding Satan, binding demons, taking territory state by state nation by nation, until they've taken the world, the seven mountain mandate, if you will, the seven mountains of power, and then they can turn and give God's kingdom to him, that when this special Jesus comes and breaks into them, this Jesus comes in them, comes in his church before he comes for his church, he will empower them to raise the dead, to be sinless, to establish God's kingdom, and then once they've done this, then they will give God, his kingdom. God will turn to Jesus and say, I physically release you to go in person and rule the kingdom that they've given to you, that they've created for you. That's not at all what the Bible teaches. Again, Jesus said in John 18, 36, my kingdom is not of this world. It is not from here. If it were, my disciples would fight to keep me from being turned over to the Jews. We build God's kingdom in the spiritual realm as we preach the gospel. But yet this explains why many within evangelicalism who don't seem to understand their Bible and bad eschatology helps breed bad theology. Uh, this is why many within evangelicalism and what I call the new religious right are willing to work with these people because they're very popular, they're growing rapidly. Again, Business Insider, July 2011 said, the new apostolic reformation is the fastest growing movement inside Christianity that you've never heard of. And many evangelicals and pro-family leaders want to work with them because some of them agree with their theology, I guess. Others because they are growing rapidly and they have the common shared goal of wanting to establish uh, a Christian kingdom or to take America back, to reclaim America. We don't see that being the mandate of the church at all. We're to proclaim truth, biblical truth, be salt and light, but the light in that context, salt and light, is the gospel. We see nowhere where we're to build earthly kingdoms or take dominion so that God can then come back. They literally teach this group, the New Apostolic Reformation, that God and Jesus are kind of sitting there waiting for us to get our act together. And once we've taken dominion, once we've Christianized the world, and once uh, Christians outnumber non-believers, which by the way, some of them teach this will happen by the autumn of 2032. By the autumn of 2032, Christians will outnumber unbelievers and will take dominion. That is not, and then God can return, uh, God can send his son Jesus here in physical flesh to rule his kingdom. That's not taught in the scriptures at all. And again, so these students are shouting angry defiance at Satan. That's not spiritual warfare. Real spiritual warfare is uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, destroying arguments raised up against the principles of the Lord. In fact, what we're doing tonight, as I said last week, is spiritual warfare. We're using scripture to destroy these arguments. In fact, what 2 Peter 2 says, what's it say? 2 Peter 2, we read a while ago, and many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth they will, will be blasphemed by covetousness or greed. They will exploit you with deceptive words. And what are we doing? We're destroying these philosophies, these fables with scripture. This is real spiritual warfare, not railing at demons. Now, after finding out a little bit about Heidi Baker, who kind of moves within these circles of the new apostolic reformation, uh, and you can find out more about her online. You would think that someone like Heidi Baker would be rejected by much of evangelicalism, wouldn't you? And pro-family leaders. Let me show you a little video clip, sadly, and this breaks my heart to tell you this. Let me show you a video clip of Tim Wildman, president of the American Family Association and American Family Radio, interviewing Heidi Baker in May of 2012. Now, remember, she was featured on the cover of Time, of uh, not Time, but uh, Christianity Today, Christianity Today, May of 2012. Here's Tim Wildman of the American Family Association interviewing her. Watch a little bit of this. Yeah. H Heidi and her husband, is it Roland or Roland? Roland. Roland. She and her husband, Roland. Heidi's on the phone with us from, uh, from London, England. They started their missionary work in 1980, and they've, traveled, mm -hmm. they've been around the world. Uh, they've been in Indonesia, Hong Kong, now Mozambique. 
and uh, since 1995 to Mozambique. Again, you would think that Heidi Baker would be rejected by many within the pro-family movement, within evangelicalism, but whether it's Lou Engle, whether it's Mike Bickle, whether it's Heidi Baker, indeed, they're not being rejected. Many of them are being openly embraced and promoted. And again, I believe this is in clear violation of 2 John 9-11, 2 Corinthians 6-14, Ephesians 5, 11, Romans 16, 17. Romans 16, 17 says, mark those. Well, let's just go to it. Go to, if you have your Bibles, go to Romans 16, 17. Romans 16, 17 tells us how we're supposed to respond to these people. Romans 16, verse 17. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause division and offenses contrary to doctrine, which you learned, and unite with them in spiritual enterprises. Unite with them in prayer prayer initiatives to reclaim America. Is that what it says? No. And avoid them. And avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ but their own belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. So the Bible tells us, mark those who cause division and offenses by false doctrine and false teaching. And that's what we're doing tonight. Marking them, calling them out, because that's what we're commanded to do in Acts 20, 28 to 31, uh, 2 Peter 2, 1 and 2, as well as uh, Jude chapter 3. So we have in this uh, Religious Trojan Horse Exposed series, we have false apostles and prophets we've looked at. We've looked at uh, um, counterfeit spiritual warfare. We've looked at counterfeit uh, signs and wonders. Let's look now at a counterfeit spiritual revival. Counterfeit spiritual revival. A lot of these folks are saying, hey, we're going to have spiritual revival. I know many of us would love to see true biblical revival in America, and those of you watching around the world would love to see it in your nation. But of great concern to me is not just the lack of uh, biblical revival, but of great concern would be a false spiritual revival. In fact, Vance Havner said it best. Vance Havner years ago said this, I am more afraid of a false revival than of no revival. A false revival with a false gospel, false evangelists, false converts, false joy. It will seem so genuine that it would deceive, if possible, the very elect. Many church leaders will endorse it. Other good people will be afraid to oppose it for fear they might be fighting against God. Look at that. Vance Havner, the late great preacher Vance Havner, said years ago, many church leaders will endorse it. What's it? This false spiritual revival. Other good people will be afraid to oppose it. Do you know how many emails I've received over the last few years, people telling me I'm being used of Satan because I have pointed out these false teachers? I am pointing out that this is not biblical. This is not a biblical revival. These are not biblical prayer rallies. They're praying for the wrong reasons. They're not even praying to the Jesus of the Bible. Look at who they define Jesus as. That's not the Jesus of the Bible. They're not even praying to the right Jesus. They're not even saved. They're praying for the wrong reasons. They're praying for this special Jesus to break in and make them this overcoming church, this overcoming bride, to be able to raise the dead and multiply food. They're praying to bind Satan and take dominion, establish this earthly kingdom that they will then rule as apostles and prophets and then give to God. It's really all about them. Have you noticed that? It's about self. It's about pride. And isn't that the ultimate sin? Pride rebellion against God. Isn't that the original sin that we see in Genesis 3? You will be like God. And yet, that's really what these people teach. They're going to become little gods. They'll have every right to be called God. They'll be doing the very things Jesus did when he was here on earth. And yet, when I try to point this out, I get emails from Christians, supposed Christians, saying, Satan is using me. No, Satan is using this false revival, this false dominant church that's building that woman that rides the beast from Revelation 17. And sadly, many church leaders are afraid to oppose it. They'll go along with it. They don't want to oppose it. And that's exactly what we see happening.